Welcome to Two Mics. My name is Kelvin Moretti. Today I'm joined in by Felix. We'll be discussing cryptocurrency. We hope you're going to enjoy and learn at the same time. So, so karibu sana. And I'm joined by a sort of crypto aficionado slash expert <laughs> slash everything in between uh Felix Karanja Felix Karim sana Hi um thanks for having me Mareti My name is Felix Karanja and I'm a digital marketing consultant on a day to day basis I help small and medium sized enterprises to scale the online presence in order to increase profitability grow brand awareness and to change people's lives Um it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me at the Two Mics podcast. Ah, Karibu sana. That sounds like a lot of things. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of things. How did you end up with um uh in crypto? What's your crypto story? So, okay, I first heard about Bitcoin in 2013. A few of my friends joined, started uh started spending their money then. I didn't I didn't have money. I was I was in school. But, yeah. <laughs> but it certainly caught yeah. my interest uh-huh. and I thought it's something I might I put it in the back burner. So for about four years, I didn't participate until uh, early 2017. There was a bubble. And that's when I started buying small amounts. Um, by the end of the year, they had ballooned to pretty significant change. But then... Um, and then the then the market crashed again. It, 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 was, it was a learning experience. Mm. Mm. But then my, my real... When I dived with two feet was in mm-hmm. 2019. Okay. Um, somebody contacted me on Telegram, said uh, that they were, they had an investment opportunity. That so, sounds like a scam. It, 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 so those guys of <laughs> those guys of, of of marketers, I'm very skeptical of them. Yeah, trust me, my 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 radar was was just beeping. But then I said I'll, I'll listen to him. So he told me what I needed to do. He told me I don't need you to send me any money. Um here's what you can do. You need to go rent a server. You can do it. He was actually somebody from I think Zimbabwe or something. It wasn't like some South African country. So he told me the whole process what I needed to do. Um so the, it was for a project called Noya. It's now rebranded to Syntropy. So I followed his instructions and um I, I was spending about 512 shillings per month. On the, on the server and then I set it up I didn't I'm not very good at coding but uh you know I can I can read a medium blog and follow instructions so I went and set it up it started making me money so I participated for about three months and then there were some issues and then I stopped but what um, kind of issues I'm curious so the, the way the way it used to work it used to work mm-hmm. uh, the way we'd, be, we'd been promised was uh, every single week they'd airdrop you a set a set amount of tokens uh noya tokens so that's the the project is called noya so they they've got a a token which is just a cryptocurrency based off of ethereum um that uh, gives you a sort of ownership of the project and it's got it's also got a, a, a numerical figure attached it's 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 like a stock so it can rise and fall depending on market conditions what people think about how confident people are in the project uh the number of people who want to buy and you know when people are selling etc so i went i bought uh, i didn't i didn't buy i didn't spend a single dime but um so after several weeks after about three months there was they stopped air dropping them So that's when I I thought you know this is not working for me anymore so I just quit. Um back then the the number of tokens that I had and uh well, I wanted to something like maybe seven dollars I'd spent 15 at the time. So I you made a loss. Yeah, I made a loss. Yeah. It was like, hey, it's a learning experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah I mm. didn't lose that much. Mm. So I, I went and forgot about it. Mm. Um so about a year later I opened the wallet because the wallet was on my phone. <clears throat> So I opened the wallet and then something interesting happened. I saw the they, they had made the, from the time that they had stopped the the, the backlog they, they had cleared it yeah so they they had dropped me tokens uh, several months earlier. But then the interesting thing was these tokens were now worth about $70. Oh. I thought oh, okay that, that's quite least, an appreciation I made, yeah. I made back my money mm. so I forgot about it. Mm-hmm. Checked in December last year they were worth uh, 560 shut up yeah it's, uh, it, was, it was ridiculous mm-hmm. that's that's when I was like okay mm-hmm. so i need to take this seriously mm-hmm. um 
let me correct something from the get go. I am by no stretch of the word an expert in crypto. Mm. Uh, That's why I said slash aficionado. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm more of an, I'm more of a casual investor. Okay. So I I do the things that make sense to me. Okay. There's I'll be frank. There's a lot of stuff that I do not understand in the crypto world. There's it's a combination of very many disciplines. There's mm. mathematics. There's cryptography. There's uh, computer science. There's law. There's economics. A whole very complicated whole slew of very complicated disciplines yeah. just merged together into one big soup ah okay yeah. okay yeah that, that, that's uh, that's very interesting because uh that's over what's the percentage you you, you invested 15 dollars and then i don't even know that math it's mathematician <laughs> how much was it over 300 percent yeah 560 yeah oh, over 300 percent appreciation is a very good investment yeah. so so now, for someone who's listening, and um, and I think most people, including myself, mm-hmm. we do not know. I, I I'm thinking of uh, what to use, but we do not know anything about mm-hmm. cryptocurrency. <laughs> so how do you break it down to uh, a complete novice? Okay, what is so, cryptocurrency? And um, yeah, let's start there. What's cryptocurrency? <clears throat> so the thing about crypto, it's it's internet money. It's it's internet it's natively internet money. Um, maybe that's not the best best description. So one way you could call it a digital asset, but you know what does that mean exactly? If you have if you buy a, a fancy kit for your avatar on on um, in a, in a game in a game, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a digital, digital asset. asset. Right? Mm-hmm. So um, even a song is a digital asset. Yeah, with in the cloud on Spotify. Mm, yeah, yeah. So. Um, it's a it's a it's a way of storing value electronically mm-hmm. in a way that that is able to be passed uh, very quickly, mm-hmm. relatively cheaply, mm-hmm. and um, discreetly. What do you mean by discreet? Yeah, no, one, the government uh, is not on your business. They don't know what you what you're doing. Okay, there's there's a lot of transparency mm-hmm. with with blockchain. Um, with the blockchain, because like for example, with Bitcoin, every single transaction is 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 visible on the ledger. Mm-hmm. So, okay, the way I like to do it is to use Bitcoin as an example mm-hmm. because this this space has grown so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, initially, it was just Bitcoin and a few players, Ethereum and the like, but now it's, it's so so big. Mm-hmm. There, there are people, there's all sorts of projects doing all sorts of crazy things. Mm-hmm. But um, so essentially, uh, what is what is cryptocurrency? It's you're saying it's a it's it's a tool of storing of value uh, digitally. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of mention of of of, of, of blockchains and all yeah. these fancy words. Uh, kindly explain to us what that, that that means. So and wallets and all that nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> so you you mentioned three terms that I want to dive into: um, cryptocurrency, blockchain, and wallets. So let's start with blockchain the the thing the technology that enables all of these magic to happen is called blockchain technology so blockchain is a fusion of three technologies um a huge part a huge component of it is is cryptography uh there's there's a lot of mathematical equations that allow the whole thing to run and uh and of course, there's computer science, but the the the, the underlying technology. I've, I've, I've butchered that description, but these I've forgotten the names. But essentially, the way it works is, you've got this trustless system. It creates a trustless system. What what I mean by trustless is, whereas if you know you're working in a, in a company, you need uh, and you want some expenses signed off, you need to go speak to your boss. Somebody has to go approve and sign something. With the blockchain, things happen automatically. There is uh, contracts are able to okay. Let me not mention contracts, but the way it works is everything is a blockchain is a ledger. Let me let me describe it that way. Blockchain is a ledger, and every single transaction that happens is recorded on that ledger, and everybody who's got access to that ledger can be able to see everything. Now, what makes it yes decentralization? So, what makes it interesting? What uh, its main appeal is the decentralization aspect. What I mean by decentralization is, if let's take Mpesa as an example, if Mpesa was to be hacked, all you'd have to do is hack Safaricom systems, yeah. But so, if 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 you're able to hack um, Safaricom servers and their backups and you know change a bunch of stuff, and it's compromised. 
I don't know what security they have, but it's, it's one it's one singular point of failure. If yeah. you're really determined, mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. yeah. you can mess it up if you want. You can you can make the entire system collapse. Yeah, precisely from, by hacking Safaricom. Mm-hmm. So how does that contrast with with, with, with uh, crypto? So what the blockchain enables mm-hmm. is instead of uh, that ledger being owned by a central entity mm-hmm. like Safaricom, mm-hmm. it's instead owned by many parties it's this it's the same copy mm-hmm. but it's owned by it's stored on very many different devices mm-hmm. it's sort of a peer-to-peer network it's sort of uh if you've if you've used torrent if you understand yes, how torrents work yes yes so everybody uh, 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 embarrassing <coughs> <I've used> torrents. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. so if you've used um so if you understand how torrents work mm-hmm. then um it's it's the one file that's hosted on very many computers mm-hmm it's the same thing with with uh, the, the let the, let's we're using bitcoin as an example right mm-hmm. so the bitcoin ledger if if you were to join the bitcoin network the bitcoin blockchain you'd have first of all have to download the ledger it's something mm-hmm. like 300 gb at this point oh yeah so you you install it into a local machine so you have a copy and every time a transaction happens it's mm-hmm. not just updated on your end it's updated on every single who person uh, who has uh, who's connected uh, in the uh, network okay. their node is updated mm. so a singular a singular point of connection is called a node you mm. might hear me say that mm. several times so if if my computer gets hacked mm-hmm. and somebody comes and changes the transactions mm-hmm. then by the, the other computers you know, it it needs to be checked counter checked with the other computers in the system mm-hmm. and if I'll, there's a bunch disparity. of them mm-hmm. yes exactly if there's a disparity then you know that transaction is cancelled oh really also there is a there's there's a time limit so a transaction can't be processed immediately mm-hmm. or rather a block mm-hmm. can't be processed immediately there's usually a there's usually a time it's it's time gapped mm-hmm. so that in case somebody it takes about 10 minutes yeah mm-hmm. on, on 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 bitcoin so if you if somebody was to hack the bitcoin ledger mm-hmm. they'd have to change the entire ledger so, so, so to speak yes and for you to be uh-huh. able to change it mm-hmm. effectively you need to have control of at least 50% of the network oh and so that's a lot yeah that's the kicker so uh. if there's a million connections uh. if there's a million nodes on the bitcoin network and you want to hack it you'd need to go and invest in a million nodes so at, at least 1 million nodes so mm-hmm. that you have enough power to be able to yeah Yeah. So, so now it, this 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 blockchain uh technology cuts across all cryptocurrencies. Yes. Um yes, that's the fundamental technology that allows it to happen. It's mm-hmm. blockchain. However, nowadays we we are seeing some other iterations of the blockchain that are that lack the decentralized aspect like mm-hmm. for example what Binance are doing with Binance Smart Chain. Um it's hosted on about I think 12 or 32 mm-hmm. not that many servers mm-hmm. and like there's there's a preferential voting system or something so it's not it's not decentralized per se mm. so it's a bit it's a bit more centralized mm. it's controlled by one entity ah yeah and, and that small group which 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 kind of uh, beats the the point of having crypto in the first place because mm. the idea is to decentralize the entire <laughs> the entire you know economic system so, it, so to speak it depends what or not you are trying to achieve mm-hmm. so so there's an argument that that can be made that by having it um in control being controlled by very few entities mm-hmm. that you, you can have faster processing times on of, ah, of transactions okay, and okay. some certain advantages to, to how, how long the, how long now with the with the the very many many different uh you call them nodes mm-hmm. uh that maybe a, a cryptocurrency like bitcoin might have mm-hmm. um How long does a transaction take to be processed? Each block contains some information about it contains the data that it's meant to hold and it contains the transaction details uh, the transaction uh, the, the hash of the previous block and the hash of the block that's going to be succeeding it. So between when a block is approved to so it it's a, it's added to the blockchain there's there's usually a 10 minute gap and the reason for that is if If a malicious hacker was to able was was able to change one transaction detail if, if they were able to amass all the computing power that they needed to change the transaction details and have other blocks and and have other nodes in the system approve it they need uh let's say let's say they change a transaction that happened yesterday 24 yeah. hours ago yeah. but by this point there's there's a whole bunch of other transactions that have happened so mm-hmm. it will not only have to recalculate the the, the transaction Uh, the block that particular block that was that was changed but it also have to recalculate the system would also have to recalculate every single succeeding block after mm-hmm. it and mm-hmm. change the information mm. the reason why it's air gapped mm. where there is that 10 minutes um 
gap period. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is because if let's say there's another hundred blocks that have been processed after that one, mm-hmm. then it's going to effectively take you at least a thousand minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And in today's world where computing power is so so Super, much that's that's not a big request. Yeah. Mm. So that's that's why they they added the the, the time limit. Ah, so by okay. by that time if uh somebody was able to spot that there's something malicious happening mm. they, they can, can intervene. They can intervene and, and stop it. Yeah. Uh, but the system is is made like I said it's trustless. It's made to work with very little human intervention. Ah, okay. Yeah. So so now um let's let's go to wallets and um for example now um uh, I'm curious uh, even as you explain the wallets mm-hmm. for, are you investing in bitcoin bitcoin what kind of cryptocurrency mm-hmm. are you investing in? Uh, um, but, that's classified information. No, it's okay. I don't yeah. mind sharing. Uh-huh. Uh, I've bought I don't know at this point maybe 500 different coins. Oh. I can't I can't honestly name them all. Um, but let's you ha- let's t- maybe Bitcoin. I assume that so you I've have. got some Bitcoin. I've got some Ethereum. I've got uh, I've got Binance coin. Mm-hmm. Play that a, a lot. I've got I've got uh, Pancake Swap, the what? Pancake Swap token. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to mention a whole bunch of things you never heard of. Most people just know Bitcoin, <laughs> Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Ethereum, and Dogecoin, and Dogecoin because of this guy, the Tesla guy. Yeah. So, so so now let's. Something like Bitcoin. How many Bitcoins exist? And and there is a way in which people... How many Bitcoins exist? So the way Bitcoin is made, uh-huh. it's supposed to have a finite amount of Bitcoin. Yeah. Of, 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 there's a finite amount of Bitcoins that are going to be minted. Mm-hmm. So the way it works is every time uh, a, a block is... Is is calculated mm-hmm. and it's added to the blockchain, yeah. the, the machines that took part in... in Oh, sorry. The nodes that took part in calculating that mm. the, the 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 block mm. they are rewarded with Bitcoin. So that's what it's called mining. Want to explain that a bit more? Because for my mom who's <laughs> in Kibogu somewhere in Meru, yeah. to understand what do you mean by mining and 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 what do you mean by the 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 the, the finitude of the number of um of 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 Bitcoins that can exist? Mining. Mining is the process of solving. The, the equations that because uh, okay break so, it down so for so, damn it down <laughs> so to speak yeah uh-huh. so for for a computer for a block to be processed there's a lot of complex mathematical equations that have to happen mm-hmm. and for that to happen it means it, it needs some computing power mm-hmm. so in, in a way to incentivize more people to add nodes onto the network mm-hmm. they incentivized by rewarding them with bitcoin also the idea is mm-hmm. These Bitcoin guys, they mm-hmm. realize the computing power is very heavy. Mm-hmm. So for you to, for 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 us to have these nodes mm-hmm. that are very critical to the entire infrastructure of Bitcoin, uh, they the, if you it's they kind of came up the system where you, if you bring you know your computing power mm-hmm. onto the system, you are rewarded with the Bitcoin. That's what you're saying. Yeah, but look at. Am I oversimplifying it? That, that's a good oversimplification. Look mm-hmm. at it this way. Mm-hmm. Google invests a lot of money and Amazon and, and Microsoft invests a lot of money mm-hmm. in buying servers yeah. and having these server farms, mm-hmm. which is basically just raw computing power. Yeah. For them, for you to be able to quickly pull up something on online and mm-hmm. check something online mm-hmm. or insult somebody. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a yeah. lot of investment that has been made to to make that process uh, seamless. Yeah. Yeah. Very simple. Mm-hmm. So, uh, instead of because because the the system isn't made to be to be run by a, by a centralized organization, mm-hmm. you want individual people contributing. Yeah. And the way, so when they contribute their computer their computing power, they are record they are they are rewarded. Mm-hmm. So when their when your computer is involved in when your node is involved in in solving for a particular block, there's a reward. Mm-hmm. There's a reward system. There's a way you can even check it. There's a website for checking it. I'm sorry I can't remember it at the moment. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you can you can check each code. You can check the number of nodes that were involved in. Uh, sorry, you can check each block uh, as it as it as it's minted. You can sorry, not not minted. I'm confusing the terms. But you can you can for each block that is processed, you can be able to see the 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 block details, and you mm-hmm. can be able to see how many which which nodes mm-hmm. took part mm-hmm. and the amounts that they were rewarded in mm. terms of bitcoin oh. so what that, that's what they call mining mm. but now the thing about mining is that the number of bitcoins that can be mined are halved after every um is it 18 months mm-hmm. there's a set period i'm, I'm not sure I'm, uh, I'm no not like sure. like what was it called the one that we used to 
uh, this half life. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, there's a sort of half life. There's sort of a half life. Yes, the, the number uh, of bitcoins that can be. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Precisely. Mm-hmm. But, and then the way, it's, the, the way the Bitcoin. Uh, the, the Bitcoin software has been programmed is is that there's, there's a finite amount of Bitcoins that can be mined, which is mm. 21 million. Okay. Right now, if you go to coingecko.com, mm-hmm. it can show you, or coinmarketcap.com, mm-hmm. it can be able to show you the, num- the number of Bitcoins that are in circulation, and okay. it can show you how many... Uh, and out of out of the, the total, mm. and then also the way it's programmed, it's that it works in such a way that the, the very last Bitcoin is going to be mined in, I think, twenty one forty or twenty forty. Mm. I'm sure it's one of the two. So, and, and uh, so then, how, what happens that I hear there's a lot of um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of bad press that Bitcoin gets as a result of and basically crypto mm-hmm. as a result of mining and the, and the uh, coal industry yep. and energy consumption. I I don't get the the, the, the correlation. Yeah. yeah, it's because there's there's a lot like I said the the computing power that's that's required is immense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what now you need to trace is what what is the source of the the computing power? What's the source of the electricity that mm, they're using? That is so uh-huh. China, for example. Why they've been criticized? Uh, why Bitcoin is tied very heavily to coal coal emissions? Because the China, which which banned Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies mm-hmm. this year, uh, a lot of them rely on coal, ah. non renewable sources. So it's, a, for it's power. an issue of the country that is maybe behind a lot a lot of the computing power behind crypto. Mm-hmm using the wrong kind of so to speak yeah. the not wrong just, kind of energy not source just the com- not just the country but mm-hmm. even the people behind it mm-hmm. and uh, so computing power is one thing there's another challenge mm-hmm. that comes with when you have immense power mm-hmm. and that is cooling mm-hmm. so computers generate heat yeah so especially mm-hmm. yeah and and like i said the the, the complex um mathematical equations require a lot of computing power mm-hmm. yeah. computing power Definitely it's going to generate a yeah. lot of it. So actually, I was seeing something on Google. Mm. The, 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 they they are pushing their servers into the sea to mm. to lower the cost of of, of cooling. Of their cooling, servers yeah. Mm. I've also seen some interesting people who are who set up their server. They're the, the mining operations in places like Iceland, mm-hmm. where it's it's cold. You have a you have a room made of ice, and you know it's just dissipates. Mm. So mm. You, okay. you essentially don't have to pay for heating. Just have to pay for electricity, mm. but not the problem. So if you are to mine Bitcoin, for example, the the machine that you need you need a special machine to be able to to mine it. Initially, mm-hmm. you could mine on a on a regular computer, mm-hmm. the old computer, but nowadays you require some special hardware. That hardware, first of all, is going to set you back set you back back like uh, maybe five thousand dollars, mm. somewhere within that range. And then the amount of electricity it consumes mm-hmm. in Kenya, it's something in the region of thirty thousand shillings per month. Shut up! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, 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 so then, all these effort. How many bitcoins do you get? So again, it depends on the amount of power that you are contributing to the, to the system. Mm-hmm. So, so the will reward power. you. Yeah. So, so if I put, if Kelvin today comes and and buys this super expensive. Pro box of a, mm-hmm. of a computer, mm-hmm. uh, and and I'm I'm willing to pay the price. Mm-hmm. I, I will get rewarded. Yeah, essentially. Mm-hmm. But remember the the number of bitcoins that are mined or have after a certain amount of period, mm-hmm. uh, a certain period of time, and also Akina um, Ethereum actually also changed the algorithm recently. Mm-hmm. So miners are not making as much. But I have a question mm-hmm. because. Uh, what is stopping someone from? I don't. I don't believe that five thousand dollars is beyond the reach of uh, most people in the world, and mm-hmm. and, and thirty thousand doesn't feel a lot for for some people. I mean, mm-hmm. we're in the wash wash capital of <laughs> East Africa. Uh-huh. Um, why is it, what is stopping everyone from doing it? Like first of all, ignorance. Okay. Uh-huh, and then fair it's, secondly, mm-hmm. it's it's a new frontier. It's scary. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you're, you're investing all this money in something that's not been proven, mm-hmm. and then you go on news and Google and see, you know, all sorts of bad press about about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. You hear all about all the scammers and you know all the funny stuff that's happening, mm-hmm. and then you you hear from very authoritative sources, um, heads of central banks speaking up against Bitcoin and the like. It's a bit scary. Yeah, so it it mm-hmm. definitely confuse a lot of people. Even mm-hmm. the Chinese government banned mm-hmm. cryptocurrencies entirely. Mm-hmm. 
Although that, that's because they're launching their own crypto. Yeah, so exactly now that, that brings me, it brings me to the next uh, point. Um, not everybody is mining. Mm. Not everybody is mining. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you are not mining. Um, mm. So the, the operation, the operation I, I, I mentioned earlier, actually, uh-huh. when I set up the server in for Noya, mm. that, that was actually a sort of mining oh, sort operation. Of mining. Yes, okay. I was contributing computing power. So okay, fair enough. Yeah. So not everybody is mining. So yeah. how are the rest of us making money out of crypto? So there's several ways to make money out of crypto. The first one, of course, is mining. Second one is uh, you can become a broker. <laughs> Third one is you can run an exchange. Cause, you know, they're not regulated. It's not like the Nairobi Securities Exchange. You, you have to jump through hoops with governments and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you can launch as long as you're doing clean business. Well, not so clean, but you'll get caught eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, the other one is trading. Mm-hmm. So trading is you buy and then you resell. Yeah, and that's why uh, cryptocurrency is in the news all the time. Mm-hmm. There was a oh, Bitcoin launched the ETF earlier. The first Bitcoin ETF was launched earlier this week, mm-hmm. and uh, it it led to Bitcoin reaching an nearly the all time high. Mm. It's all time high. Yeah. So 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 now I would ask this. Mm-hmm. So um so trading. Mm-hmm. I'm sure one Bitcoin right now is trading at how much? Was it sixty? Sixty mm-hmm. uh, about one one Bitcoin is trading above sixty thousand dollars. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have a quote of. The, I I don't even know where I can get that kind of money if I wanted to. <laughs> uh, so yeah, sixty six thousand is uh, is seven is about seven point three million. Shillings. Exactly. So now yeah. a question would be asked because all these people are trading. Mm-hmm. They don't. I'm sure they don't have this kind of money. How how is it? Uh, how how is it broken down? Is it, is it one Bitcoin? That has uh, no, it's one smaller Bitcoin. values uh, that can ah. be broken down, or how? What's happening? So the thing about Bitcoin mm-hmm. and uh, essentially all cryptocurrencies is that mm-hmm. they are fungible. Mm-hmm. What what when I say fungible, what I mean is it can be broken down into like a, you can just can like be, a normal currency where you would have a thousand shillings and then shillingy shillingy shilling you can break it down. Uh-huh. No, it, it, it's even it's even bigger than that. Oh, you, you can take one shilling, not a thousand, one shilling, mm-hmm. one bitcoin, and divide it by a billion times. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if 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 you have zero point zero zero one of a bitcoin, mm-hmm. yeah, so you can have a billionth of a bitcoin. You can own a billionth of a bitcoin. You can send a billionth of a bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Uh, send three billion. So uh, it, it can be broken down. You can just buy as much as you need. Mm-hmm. Um, the you, the larger question you'd asked about trading was how. Mm-hmm. So there's there's a lot of parallels when you look at the crypto. Look at the crypto market. There's a lot of parallels between the crypto crypto market and the and the stock market, mm-hmm. also the forex market. Mm-hmm. There's if you understand how to trade on one of those two because they're already established and they're trusted and there's systems all around the world mm-hmm. that control those two industries then you can understand you, you have a fairly good basis for understanding how the crypto market works mm. yeah but there's there are some parallels but there are also some stark differences because mm-hmm. like i said it's a it's a combination of very 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 many disciplines so 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 mm-hmm. now what you're saying to answer my question mm-hmm. to understand your answering my question yeah. is that um this is one bitcoin mm-hmm. but you can be able to buy a share of that bitcoin that you can be able to sell when the price is uh, what do you mean by a share uh you when it's funged so, <laughs> so to speak yeah so, you so can a, a you can bitcoin get a fund value of that bitcoin a, a bitcoin is is worth 66000 sorry mm-hmm. so a bitcoin is worth 66000 mm-hmm. and you can say instead of buying a bitcoin i don't have enough money to buy one bitcoin mm-hmm. but i can buy 100 dollars worth of mm-hmm. bitcoin mm-hmm. yeah so oh, so it's you, you're not Necessarily like owning a quarter Bitcoin, you're mm. owning two hundred dollars worth of the Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. of the sixty thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. So who owns who owns this sixty that I'm buying from? So it's that's just Kev- the market price of one Bitcoin. So, so, Kev- so Kevin bought six uh, bought a Bitcoin, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, is did he put it out in the market and people bought small parts <laughs> of it, or what happened? No, it's like when you go to the market and you see nyanyas are being sold for mm-hmm. 10 shillings each. Mm-hmm. And say, ah, I don't have 10 shillings, but yeah, give me nyanya for 20 cents. Mm-hmm. They just cut for you like a small Yeah. Piece. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so the Bitcoin may reduce in terms of it is size, or it <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it bits? You get a chunk. Uh-huh. Um, 
there has been a lot of um, negative press um, about Bitcoin, and um, and the fact that we are having a currency or a, a means of trading that is very 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 malleable to 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 forces outside of its, uh, I would say, falsified bubble uh, of control, uh, in the sense that. Uh, if to, uh, someone like Elon Musk, that time Elon Musk sent a tweet, and and and, and, and it basically affected the, the 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 investment. People lost a lot of money. No, it wasn't. It wasn't Elon. No, no. Uh, my point is this: uh-huh. okay, um, uh-huh. someone can put out a tweet. Uh-huh. Someone can make out a statement. The government, mm-hmm. uh, China, can decide to ban them. Yeah, actually, and, China, China uh, is what affected the price of and it caused the market kids. crash in in May. Exactly, and it cascades across the entire uh, economy of the bitcoin mm-hmm. um why is it why why should someone invest in bit in, in uh, why do you think someone should invest in crypto uh, if it's so risky or, or do you even appreciate that it's risky let's start from there yes it's certainly risky mm-hmm. i mean you're reinventing the entire financial system mm-hmm. there's risks attached to that mm-hmm. Th- that's not an easy thing to do yeah and pretending otherwise would be a lie yes uh why should you invest in bitcoin if you believe in the internet if everyone does i mean <laughs> oh there's still some skeptics mm-hmm. as a matter of fact the internet received <laughs> yeah. the internet received a lot of bad press in the 90s mm-hmm. and bitcoin cryptocurrency rather is is just the next iteration of the internet mm-hmm. and it combines the change in the financial system and the evolution of the internet into into the into a similar thing yeah. i saw an interesting video that talked about the the financial systems that we've had, they, they usually change. They usually change after something like 30 years. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, the uh, when the dollar was taken off the gold standard, and then, you know, before that, there was, there was another system, financial system that was in place before that, 30 years before that. There was another one, about 27 to 29 years before that. Um, so I think Bitcoin is just inevitable. It's, it's evolution, it's two evolutions that I've met. I think, my personal opinion is that Bitcoin... Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I might be wrong. <coughs> people, mm-hmm. There are people who believe that Bitcoin is the future. Mm-hmm. I'm not only convinced because um, someone said governments are cartels that we are allowed to rule over us. Mm. Uh, these cartels... Yes. And, it, and so, and that, that's the thing. Cryptocurrencies, especially the decentralized ones like, like Bitcoin and Ethereum, mm-hmm. what they do is they take money, is they take the power from government. From the government. Because there's one thing we saw last year mm-hmm. was that governments can simply print money. But now, you see now the question mm-hmm. becomes this: um, the the point of printing money is 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 essentially a very important point in the sense of, in the sense of being able to control, being able to stabilize the 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 the, 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 the means of exchange. Right? Trade has become yeah. When you print money, what you're doing is this: you're saying we we are seeing a situation where we can have a problem into the financial system. So let's 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 do certain things yeah central bank uh, is basically an arm that does certain things to stabilize the the, the economic yes, system precisely it can manipulate exactly can manipulate the so, so it kind of kind of gives stability to the economic system gives stability to the economy but now that's one way of looking at it um economies um economies are very uh I want to say mobile, but I feel like that's not the correct word. Mm-hmm. But they, they morph a lot. There's a lot of morphology that happens in mm-hmm. in an economy, and unchecked, right? Mm-hmm. If if you don't put correct measures in place, a lot of bad things can happen. That's why we need a government to control. We need we need someone who's able to control it. No, my problem with printing money is this. Uh, not just my problem, but I think the problem with printing money. You've not created any extra value. We just printed more pieces of paper with nothing really to back them. That's the problem that was un- unleashed once the the US dollar was taken off the gold standard. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with what, what that yeah, means. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. Yeah, precisely. So each before then, each dollar that was printed, maybe for the people who don't understand, um there was a time 
okay, the way the banking system originated was people would would take their valuables to banks and banks would, gi- would give them it was actually gold yes, and silver gold yeah and and, yeah. and they like and banks would give them a uh, a note a piece of paper that said mm. you we've got a certain value yeah yes of gold you can come that belongs to you yeah so over time it changed and they were able to they were able to 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 offer denominational notes so that people instead of having to come and withdraw the your, entire stash yeah you and can then, then bank yeah. it again so that yeah. you can take a small amount out yeah. you can just give somebody some paper and tell some them aspect of it yeah just a small fraction tell them mm. you know but you see now what happened back uh-huh. even even back then credit uh, w- once once the bank has realized that they can be able to on this gold that is held they can be able to create money out of thin air not all the money was backed by gold mm-hmm. uh, there's a huge sizable chunk of it as was backed in, in gold mm-hmm. but the, this extra money that the banks made out of out of uh, out of uh, you know yeah out of credit mm-hmm. credit essentially is what changed the entire game and that's mm-hmm. why we go to a place where the government's realized ah, we can just get it out of gold standard and and the and the, and the currency will be floating mm-hmm. safely no that's a challenge why is it there's a, a lot of experts curious. there's a lot of experts who say that it's going to first of all it's not backed by any value that, that's, Th- and that is not a problem that is a problem the reason why i do not think it's a problem is mm-hmm. this um when when we have basically money mm-hmm. is 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 use accepting a piece of paper that is not worth its value mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. in exchange for something else exactly it's a trust system because mm-hmm. for example now uh what was it called i i forget the, the time in economics but where say uh, uh when when we specialize in our different fields uh, mm-hmm. i'm producing a remote you're producing you know your earphones and your uh, kabingo is producing his shoes mm-hmm. you'll be very lucky Mm-hmm. if i come mm-hmm. and uh i i coincidentally mm-hmm. you need my remote mm-hmm. and i need your what i said you producing and i need your headphones and your headphones and uh, you you'd be very lucky that that's why they that, so, that's why they agreed so not, now we we have a third party called money mm-hmm. that can be able to store value mm-hmm. we can be able to uh, 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 i would say a note value to such so mm-hmm. can use it as a medium of exchange precisely so say, let, let me just pause you there yeah. what is money money is a medium of exchange essentially so which means not it's not a piece of paper that you put in your pocket it's literally anything it's literally anything that both of you people agree has value right anything that we want to exchange mm-hmm. yeah and and you, you it doesn't have to have value you might want to exchange this guy at this moment because he's making noise in the background <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah but but you two have to have some sort of consensus that consensus that mm-hmm. this is valuable to me it's valuable to you yeah. mm-hmm. you, you can you can do x y z with it Definitely. so money historically mm-hmm. has has usually been commodities like gold silver there was a time when it was cowrie shells cowrie there was shells. salt yeah. beans pepper pepper uh, pepper. what purple cloth all that yeah i get uh-huh. But now we've come to understand money as pieces of paper that aren't inherently valuable. But are the value of the money mm-hmm. is the fact that they they are backed mm-hmm. by a government. It, 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 the government is it's the guarantor of this piece of paper. If And I printed my piece of paper, no, I'll take it. Sure. Now that's the problem. What, what happens when the government goes rogue? What happens when the government says we're just going to print more money so that we can the the people the powerful people in government can become more richer? Fair enough. And it happened. It happened in Kenya in the nineties. But look at Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe got so Zimbabwe. Let, let me just explain. Zimbabwe, hyperinflation in, in Zimbabwe got so ridiculous. If you went to a restaurant and asked for a cup of coffee, they had to bail you before they made the coffee because if they made it. And you drank it. By the time you were finished with your cup, the price would have changed. You see, I, 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 I fair enough. Uh-huh. But then I'm saying this: mm-hmm. what you have done mm-hmm. is that you've given me examples of of you've given me a, one, or two, uh, one of the two or three bad examples that everyone goes to. Mm-hmm. 
right? Mm-hmm. I think there's Zimbabwe, there's Venezuela, and I want to see Greece for some reason. There's no, there's just no good minute. example of people who printed just, money. Just, just and let me. Well. And then the, the example of Kenya you've given uh-huh. is actually uh, it was as a result of an IMF's uh, austerity measure mm-hmm. uh, to devalue our currency mm-hmm. for them to be able to support us. So, so no, no. My point is this. My point is this. It, it um, uh, we, we can point fingers all the time, all day long at at government printing money mm-hmm. but these are usually majority of the times mm-hmm. uh, uh, intended to stabilize the economy one and to stabilize the currency itself that is my point that's the excuse it's not an excuse sometimes it's, it's, it's sometimes a practical it's... way of do, do you know how how infl- there's something called the economic cycle mm-hmm. fair enough i know you're going to say it's caused by by the 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 monitor the the, the monetary system mm-hmm. but the the, the 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 tools of controlling inflation is are usually printing and, and withdrawing money from the economy okay he's he's an interesting statistic yeah about 80% of all US dollars ever minted mm-hmm. were minted um, last year uh, in 2020 yeah. and 2021. Yeah. True. What does that mean when the government can just... just th- Hold up, let's just think about that. Mm-hmm. The US as a country has been around for 300, uh, 300 plus years? Yeah. So, something like that, close to 300 mm-hmm. years. 1726, yeah? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so what, 200, close to 250 years. Mm-hmm. 80% of the money ever printed in that country yeah. was printed during a, a short 18-month window. Fair enough. What does that mean when the government can just come and print money? The, this thing that we've we've come to accept as a store of value. Here's another statistic I can share. Uh-huh. Do you know uh, if of or I think in the world uh, mm-hmm. I, I, let me check actually mm-hmm. it's usually a, a tenth as, as in uh, uh, I think it's it, let, let's even assume it's 70 trillion dollars that is is what people claim to own in their bank accounts uh, the amount of money in circulation is 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 is, uh, is a tenth of that so and I know it's a, it just, a, just a second mm-hmm. you're referring to that in US dollars yeah um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm using... I'm, so I'm what saying, happens if you can just print US dollars? It means even the point of reference is skewed. Yes, yes, fair enough. That's a very strong point. But then, uh-huh. all I'm trying to tell you is this. Um, these measures mm-hmm. are not usually rigid. Mm-hmm. They're not really cast on stone. Mm-hmm. There are ways mm-hmm. of getting that money that has been taken into the, into, 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 um, into the market, mm-hmm. outside the market. There's a way of exactly monetary policy. Yeah, there's monetary policies that can be able to remove. There are ways in which you can be able to remove that money that is in circulation back into the into the government itself. Interest and inflation. No, no. Central banks. Sorry. Central banks do 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 play a role in in setting the inflation in the country. Yes. And that's that in itself is a hidden tax. No and, problem. And that's, and that's why the whole area of cryptocurrency is becoming so big. It's because people are, you know, they're, they're, they're having like that, that man in the Bible who had the, the things that blocked his eyes and then they were removed. Uh, Saul, I, I think, you know, yeah. now they can see. They, they think, they're seeing that we've been hoodwinked for so long. We believed that there was, you know, what the authority said was was the truth and the only way of life. But now they're looking at alternatives. How, if, how much? How much? What's the average savings rate in your bank? Uh, if you deposit money in a savings account, how mm-hmm. much? How much will you? How much percentage will you get? At they'll the end give of me the year? three or two. Yet our inflation rate is seven percent. That, that, you've, that essentially, means, you've essentially lost four percent. That means of that, your money. That means we are having mm-hmm. a greedy banking. This a, a greedy banking system. It's not an issue of the government. Government is the one that sets. So now has a a role in setting Kevin, I have a question. I have a question. Uh-huh. Because I see what you crypto guys are trying to do. Now this has turned, has turned into a political discussion, not a commercial one. Yeah. But it's interesting because um, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. Right now, mm-hmm. in this podcast, yeah. we are using electricity, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Electricity that, that, um, that is enabling us to have a good experience. Yeah. Um, so what you guys are suggesting... Mm-hmm. Is to defund the government, right? Not so, necessarily. But no, no, no um, because I'm curious. Mm-hmm. When 
a lot of revenues from the government mm-hmm. uh, usually comes from uh, you know the transactions that people uh, the th- transactions that people do mm-hmm. and taxing those transactions mm-hmm. uh, uh, because if we are going to have a system where crypto takes over mm-hmm. it essentially means that all the government dollars or shillings are going to, to, to stick in our pockets right yeah. It's going to be worthless pieces of paper. It, but but now the question becomes, mm-hmm. where does the government, mm-hmm. uh, the first point, the mm-hmm. first question, mm-hmm. where does the government get its revenue to be able to enable you uh, as citizens uh, to be able to access uh, aff- affordable healthcare, mm-hmm. uh, build infrastructure? And the second point is, yes, you have these transactions that you're doing on the crypto platform. Mm-hmm. But one of the most important critical government roles is arbitrate, arbitrating contracts and enforcing those contracts and protecting the people who are doing these contracts. Uh, I, I, love, let me, let me I, I love that point. you mentioned that. So, so uh-huh. now I'm curious, how do we reconcile that? Mm-hmm. If, if today I buy your shoes and you pay me in crypto and, and, and I run away, how do you make sure that I'm punished? Okay. So, Start with the first question. Uh, so the first one, I th- uh, there's something I mentioned. Turns out you have to do your hand in it. This way. <laughs> <laughs> there's something that I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. You are reinventing the financial system. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be easy. Mm-hmm. A lot of things are going to be overhauled. The way things work right now mm-hmm. in 30, 50 years are not going to be working the same way. Mm-hmm. Mm. One Here's an interesting example. Uh, I, there's something called, I don't know if you've heard of these, they're called fan tokens. Mm-hmm. So clubs like Lazio, Juventus, Manchester City. <clears throat> PSG. <laughs> uh-huh. So these clubs, what they're doing, they're introducing something called fan tokens. And what, what they essentially give you is is uh, the more you have, okay, that's how you show your loyalty to the club. How loyal are you to Manchester City? I am loyal these tokens worth. Mm-hmm. Okay? And the more tokens you have, uh, at some point they, they create so they, they create uh, tiers. So if, if you have a set number of tokens, you can participate in decision making in the club. Like what kind of, what who do you want to be your kid's sponsor, for mm-hmm. example? Mm-hmm. What kind of design do you want on your kid? Who do you want to sell? Yeah, exactly. Player mm-hmm. transfers. You can mm-hmm. even start debating uh, uh, no, when the club holds the AGMs. When, once you have enough of the tokens, mm-hmm. it earns you the right to be able to uh, it sort of gives you a vote. Yeah. It's the, the thing about crypto in general is that it democratizes a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Now, if I mention democracy in the actual world, there's a lot of examples for why demo- democracy is, is, is broken. There's a lot of ways you can play around with it. A lot of things are broken. Yeah. A lot but, of things are broken doesn't mean you should ban them to the ground. I'm not saying, I, that's the thing. I'm not saying ban mm-hmm. them. I'm just saying they're going to have to be reimagined mm-hmm. or find a more efficient way of doing them. Mm-hmm. For example, here's, here's, an, here's an interesting uh, um, uh, use of blockchain technology. So let's take something like Wikipedia. Okay? So Wikipedia, you've got an entry for <laughs> Jihad. Mm-hmm. At the moment, there's just one page for Jihad. Mm-hmm. What blockchain would, it, would be able to help you is to be able to get a more nuanced look at Jihad. Mm-hmm. So you can... Uh, instead of having jihad, you have jihad from the point of view of the Americans. Mm-hmm. What do Americans think of jihad? Mm-hmm. But what do African Muslims think of jihad? Mm-hmm. What do people in the Middle East think of jihad? Mm-hmm. What do Chinese Muslims mm-hmm. think of jihad? Get a more all-round view. Mm-hmm. You're not necessarily breaking down whatever is there. You're building up on it mm-hmm. or refining it. Mm-hmm. Crypto can really, really help you there. Secondly, you mentioned enforceability of contracts. You've not as- answered my question. Oh, sorry. Uh-huh. The first one, like where does the government now make money? Make money. How how do we how do we make sure that the government is getting its revenue? No, no that's that, to that, do government things. As, as I said, because you don't very, want to go at the airport. Very complicated stuff. But I think China 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 is exploring. Uh, China, El Salvador. I think mm-hmm. El, El Salvador is El Salvador is an interesting case study because mm-hmm. they they are they essentially taking up Bitcoin as as a form of government car, as legal legal tender in the country. But there are those government issued coins. I I, I read that about them. So now, mm-hmm. unless some say, governments are doing yes, that, yes, the China is also is also planning to roll out its Chinese yuan. Mm-hmm. Now, the thing about as I said, there's a lot of transparency. Anybody, when, you, when you're working on the blockchain, anybody who's got access to the blockchain can be able to see all the transactions. Yeah. So even, which essentially means the government could be very, can very easily be able to track where you're spending your money. Mm-hmm. 
And if they say the physical money is no longer accepted, everything has to be virtual, then <laughs> and they've banned all sorts of other cryptocurrencies because now there mm-hmm. there's something called privacy coins mm-hmm. where instead of having a transparent ledger, mm-hmm. everything is done behind closed doors yeah. and it's very very hard to to see what's going on behind them yeah um okay fair enough so so maybe so, a solution could be government having their own coins government right? issuing their own coins mm-hmm. um setting up a way of tracking it, you it's see not that, it's not going to be easy that's, that's the thing. my point. governments governments will have to adapt uh-huh Okay, that's they're my point. Because they're also getting they're also getting disrupted. That's mm-hmm. the one thing that really scares them. Mm-hmm. They realize that their power is at threat mm-hmm. by a democratized way of doing things. And Bitcoin, oh, sorry, cryptocurrency and the blockchain enables you to do that very, 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 very smoothly. So, so the second point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So you 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 went, you talked about enforcement of contracts, and I thought that's a very interesting one because um, Ethereum. Ethereum's key advantage is that it's programmable. Mm-hmm. What programmable means is that you can be able to set up systems, you can be able to set up code that is going to automatically execute mm. based on certain conditions yeah. without any human intervention. Mm-hmm. And once they're called smart contracts, mm-hmm. and once the contract is published, then it's there and it's there forever. Mm-hmm. You, you can't take it down. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't change it. I'm not sure if you can take it down, but you can't change it. Examples of smart contracts in use. There's going to be a time, as ridiculous as this sounds, there's mm-hmm. going to be a time when it's going to be much safer for you to buy land mm-hmm. using the blockchain route mm-hmm. than going to a government office. Why? Mm-hmm. Like I said, everything is trackable. You can be able to see this piece of land. That's why when you have things like NFTs, called non-fungible tokens, mm-hmm. a piece of land is has a digital asset representing that, mm-hmm. the physical asset. Mm-hmm. And once that physical asset, once the digital asset is minted, you can be able to see the way as it passes down. So mm. there's no issue of somebody saying... Selling a fake asset. Yeah, or saying I have a title deed. And I own a piece of land yeah. and somebody else comes and says I have a title okay, deed I, for this piece own. of land. Mm-hmm. How do you prove whose is right? So fine. But uh, now I'm saying... So this, that, that is in the distant future. Oh, no, smart contracts already... No, no, I'm talking about like uh, I, 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 uh, migrating our entire... Uh, I, I would say certainly that system that's going to take a bit of time. But right now we've got smart contracts that are already that are already working. Mm-hmm. You say if X Y Z conditions are met, send three Ethereum mm-hmm. to e, three ETH to to Bill, mm-hmm. for example. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so now, I feel like that also doesn't answer my question. Mm-hmm. So how do we? Because the government mm-hmm. is. A caretaker, and the mm-hmm. government is 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 a service provider. Mm-hmm. The government is a caretaker, and um, so if we take down the the stability that we have, mm-hmm. right? If we, if you're going to take down the, the 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 stability, and and this stability is heavily predicated on the amount of money that mm-hmm. this particular you remember entity I mentioned, has. You remember I mentioned the term trustless. Trustless, fine. But uh, so the the way these systems are built, mm-hmm. they're built such that they require very minimal human input Mm -hmm. in order for things to be confirmed that they are working the way they're supposed to be working. Mm -hmm. So in the case of now if somebody was to come up with with, uh, in the case of land Mm -hmm. somebody was to be able to come up with um, with a title deed Mm -hmm. claiming that they own the same piece of land Mm -hmm. then the government's role Mm -hmm. when you go to court is, is actually a bit more simplified because all they need to do is do an audit of of the blockchain, mm-hmm. you see, but now actually, their, their work is actually their role is actually going to be simplified in terms of in terms of arbitration, in terms of uh, um, enforcing contracts. No, I'm asking. I mm-hmm. bought a shoe mm-hmm. from Jing Jingping in China, <laughs> and I'm sitting in Kino. <laughs> and how, be, how do I? You'll be banned. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, 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 my question is: How do I make sure? How how someone who's in a completely different jurisdiction mm-hmm. because the current system how it exists uh-huh. is that there are checks and balances that makes that makes sure mm-hmm. that before my 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 shipment has been dispatched on the other end mm-hmm. payment has been made within the other end bank to bank mm-hmm. right so it's a bank to bank transaction so there's these things like escrow mm-hmm. even even in even in crypto the world of crypto mm-hmm. these escrow services okay so uh, you know you send money it's, it's held by so there are things called automated market makers. Mm-hmm. 
and decentralized um, they're called DAOs mm-hmm. the, the, the broader term is DAOs mm-hmm. so the, uh, decentralized application uh, this, this something the, the organizations mm-hmm. who's who rely primarily on code mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so xyz conditions have to be met mm-hmm. and you set conditions and yeah. you 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 capture that inside a smart contract and then okay. it's going to be able to be executed automatically okay. so let's say you buy shoes from me you're in a different country i um i ship the shoes you send the money i won't get the money mm-hmm. it's held by an trusted okay. third party mm-hmm. and then i make the shoes i dispatch it mm-hmm. I, i dispatch the shoes for 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 you mm-hmm. uh, for, for transit yeah mm-hmm. and then i i, I scan a code mm-hmm. and i i i send it to them yeah to the to the third party once you receive the code uh, and the, the, so, the, mm-hmm. so let's say there's a process so once it gets so to the ship, of, yeah once it gets to the, to the to the people who are going to be shipping mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. also they you know, they scan the code and then it's up, it's updated to to the third party they're mm-hmm. able to see you know the process it's taken going from my hands it's in the shipper's hands mm-hmm. once it, the shipper gets to the to your destination so country yeah it's scanned again somebody mm-hmm. says it's it's up the system knows it's reached the destination country and then once you finally get it you take a picture of, on your phone and mm-hmm. you know the QR code or or the the the, the barcode and you know this once the third party sees that you received the shoe then it discusses the money okay. to me yeah. uh, another question yeah. yeah. no i was mm-hmm. asking I, I, i needed clarification on 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 that when it comes to bitcoin yeah. so now a question um i want to buy my guns from north korea mm-hmm. why is it so easy to buy them I, my, isn't it a bit of a enabler for illegal certainly trade. certainly especially with and how can you with live? privacy how do you sleep at night <laughs> <laughs> well I'm, i'm not the right person to answer that question <laughs> mm-hmm. but the yes the the, the it bitcoin has Bit, bitcoin especially in the early days used to be abused a lot by by people criminals yeah criminals mm-hmm. and i saw the f so a report by the fbi saying that bitcoin is actually one of the best inventions that has helped them because they were able to track Mm-hmm. Again everything is transparent on the on the on the blockchain as long as you have access you can be able to see what everything that's happening. Mm-hmm. So you know if I sent you some money a third party let's say you know the government can come and and see I sent you the money you can also check where I got the money from where that person got the money from where it they can trace it back up to the originator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you use if you use a transparent network like like bitcoin or ethereum it can be accessed you can use certain networks such as monero uh, what about the ones that are not very transparent yes precisely monero they call mm-hmm. privacy coin mm-hmm. yes and those ones are certainly lending themselves to government bad, bad actors mm-hmm. no, so the way they are made is even the people in control of the system mm-hmm. can't mm. or the people who make the system can't really Mm-hmm. see everything oh really yeah mm. because you know if what if they're subpoenaed and they have to give oh. all the information mm. that they have mm. Mm. so they it's kind of even absolving them they know they've created something back bad so yeah. they're just absolving themselves from I, I criminal say, culpability I wouldn't say bad uh-huh. because look at it this way what about um people who are politically what are they call politically exposed personalities mm mm-hmm if you know the president of your country doesn't like you why would I, if the president doesn't like me then <laughs> maybe I deserve it i mean no, the no, president not, not doesn't like me no not necessarily i might be a big fish though no when, when you look at mm-hmm. um look at bobby wine in, in uganda yeah he's a, he's, oh, he's a or, jerk no, well not, not he should be locked away and be tried <laughs> like i'm just messing uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so <laughs> um, but i get your point there yeah. make your point mm-hmm. yeah so if if somebody in power considers you to be a threat that needs to be eliminated mm-hmm. what 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 are the things that they usually do they'll they'll block your money uh, oh, they just send guys and just beat the crap out of you uh, they'll beat you but you know after you escape how do you when you go to another country how do you get your money to go to the bank the, <laughs> your bank account has been frozen i'm just messing in it yeah yeah by mm. the government so mm. so it helps yeah so but, but so now the, 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 question... the anonymity aspect is important mm. not, not just for protecting criminals mm-hmm. but the, the other people who stand to benefit or, or if you want to make an anonymous donation to um i don't know organizations that how about you send them the money and tell them it's anonymous but, but, but send you, you them want... a check the check 
there's a money trail when the money leaves your bank account to their bank account and the government can be able to see all those things okay yeah so so the thing the thing is what you guys are trying to do essentially is completely remove the government from the equation and uh, remove government oversight remove and, any centralized institutions but, but 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 are you getting my point that centralization of institution is not necessarily the worst thing It, it's like it's yes, a, we a have point. a road with potholes, but then you guys decide, you know what? Let's just remove the entire road and 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 start flying. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you you get like, mm-hmm. how about we try to look at the things that are bad and we try to fix these problems? But anyway, that's see, a discussion. First of all, humans mm-hmm. are flawed. Uh, any system that's going to have to rely on human intervention lends itself to all the weaknesses and biases of humanity. Mm-hmm. But if you can set up a computer system that follows strict rules mm-hmm. about how to act mm-hmm. and act in the best interests of uh, the people in the ecosystem, mm-hmm. that's better than any human. I have a question. Do you know yeah. things called solar flares? Uh, what's that? Solar flares are emissions from the sun that are usually electromagnetic in nature, that ca- uh, charged, that comes towards the earth Fortunately, the Earth is able to, most of the time, uh, the, the polarity of that is able to diffuse it and it doesn't have an effect on us. But God forbid, uh, we, we, uh, we, we get to a point where it infiltrates our atmosphere because it can happen. It's happened before. Uh, the entire electrical infrastructure, even including our televisions, or anything that would be on, that requires any form of electricity goes down doesn't that mean then if we are in a world where we are dependent fully on 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 the grid and the, and computers we are going to we that's are going where to, we are headed we are going to obliterate our our entire financial system that's that all the financial crisis no 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 they've not been caused by the government but sometimes they've been caused by covid so my point is huh? is there isn't there a risk of putting everything online Our entire economic system there, putting it online. There's risks to everything. There's also a risk of continuing the way we are mm-hmm. with the massive amounts of printing money and uh, bad actors. So how how do we get credit using the, the the Bitcoin now? How do we? So no, that's an interesting thing. Um, exchanges such as Binance offer something called uh, leveraged uh, leveraged. Uh, I've forgotten the terms, but th- th- there's a way you can. There's a way you can get credit. There's also something called aut- aut- automatic market makers. Um, so if if you're familiar with market makers from the world of uh, Forex, when there's a shortfall, um, maybe I'm not the best person to explain this, but if there's a shortfall of um, if there's a shortfall for supply of supply, mm-hmm. so I, I want to buy 300 Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. There's not enough Bitcoin in in the market in the open market. So there's an organization that can automatically lend me money, and then you give them that extra Bitcoin. So they, of course, are going to charge me interest. They don't know, don't know But it will be in Bitcoin, right? Yeah, yeah. But then there's an, two problems with that. Mm-hmm. First problem mm-hmm. there is the finitude of the number of Bitcoin that exist, mm-hmm. right? So there's only How so much to go around. My, no, mm-hmm. you see, the the, the 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 difference with our current system is mm-hmm. the fact that there is an infinite, there is infinitesimal number of money that you can create out of thin air. Mm-hmm. But now with Bitcoin, you you mentioned earlier yeah. that there is a there is a certain there is a there is finitude. There is, mm-hmm. uh, but the value there's, the value isn't finite though. No. But now the, a question can be asked. Mm-hmm. A question can be asked. Then, uh, fine, fair mm-hmm. enough. But doesn't that then bring back, to, uh, bring us back to the same problem? Mm-hmm. If you're able to still create credits, mm-hmm. doesn't it doesn't it bring us back to the same problem that you're having with the current financial system? See, you know, the the money isn't coming from thin air. It's actually being backed by people and liquidity pools. People who've supplied their money, who supplied their cryptocurrency, in order for it to be availed, so that they can earn the interest. So these things called liquidity pools. Um, so if in the example of Bitcoin, if there's a shortfall, if I need to, if you need to purchase 300 Bitcoin and the market doesn't have enough, it can go and fetch from a liquidity pool. And once there's more people who are willing to sell, the money is going to be automatically recouped into the liquidity pool. However, you'll be charged an interest for that. And the people who contributed to the liquidity pool are going to share the amount of interest. When you realize mm-hmm. interests. Mm-hmm. 
in and of itself mm-hmm. is usually creating new value out of nowhere you realize that's what interest is right not in this case then, because then what, what, ex- what, make what, me understand what, where is the interest come so from the interest because is, if all of us borrow money let's assume all of us borrow yeah. where is it going to come from so we have to create first we have of all to be creating f- first of all we won't be bo- we won't be borrowing all the amount of money in the world fair enough mm-hmm. Second, fair enough secondly if in the example i need a 300 bitcoin and let's say the interest is 2% what is going to happen is that i'll receive 294 bitcoin okay so and then the the, the amount is the, the remaining amount is dispersed to the members of the liquidity pool mm-hmm. proportionally but now you realize uh-huh. we've created four more bitcoins no you've not created any four more bitcoins mm-hmm. what have you created you've been you've received 98% of the money then there's something i'm not getting mm-hmm. so so oh it's the value mm-hmm. So what you do oh, okay I get what you're saying. So what you're saying is that <laughs> you have we are playing with the value not with the number of bitcoins that exist. Yes precisely. No. Here's the thing. Once we've minted the the 21 million bitcoins because that's the that's the maximum amount. Once you minted the 21 million bitcoins um the the value of one bitcoin is not static. It's it's changing. So if bitcoin right now is 66,000 how many okay so Bitcoin right now is 66,000. Um there is only going to be 21 million bitcoins that are ever going to be mined. The human race is what's our current population? 7 billion. 7 billion. So that's one bitcoin per what 300 people or 3000 people. Mhm. Some ridiculous figure like that. Mm-hmm. I might have done it wrongly. Definitely. Yeah, so mm. it's what it's one to yeah, one to one to 300 or 3000 people It's going to reach a place where the value of bitcoin is won't just be 66000 it might it might reach half a million dollars it might reach i don't know a million dollars the price of one bitcoin but again it's fungible so you can you can have a billionth of that you know the irony of so bitcoin if you need to if I, if i need to pay you mm. i won't be i won't be paying you one bitcoin i'll be paying you if you know if, if i had a meal worth 10 dollars i'll be paying you 10 dollars worth of bitcoin then you realize that, that, that the iron the irony of bitcoin is the fact mm-hmm. that you your value is dependent mm-hmm. on a system you're trying to destroy like yes. uh, how does that work now what what they what they've created is uh, they've created these things called stable coins mm-hmm. and um, the most popular stable coins mm-hmm. are USDC mm-hmm. which is run by Coinbase mm-hmm. where Coinbase opens open their the operations in Africa and they think even in Kenya mm-hmm. so you can start transacting on Coinbase there is another one called Tether mm-hmm. known uh, the symbol is USDT mm-hmm. and um, what's the other one it's another very popular one. okay so th- these two instead of being pegged to instead of having their their, their value floating freely It, they track the the value of the US dollar so even even in a lot of exchanges when when you'll see um when you see the price of something listed they don't list it as one USD or, or, or rather when they say the the price of one bitcoin they don't refer to it as $66,000 they refer to it as 66,000 USDT mm-hmm. however this USDT is also tracking the US dollar but it's 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 a way of no, no it's a way of using an on-chain mechanism Mm-hmm. to track off chain things but are you guessing the irony though but but here's the thing mm-hmm. because they already exist what if we did away with the US dollar no we have a problem yeah, certainly if if, if, if these things are too if you to get mm-hmm. if you to get rid of of the 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 the, the fiat currency mm-hmm. we have a problem even with bitcoin yeah and like because said, we can't scale our economies anymore and they said this is this is a very complex issue Yeah it's, it's there's, definitely... a, there's a lot of moving parts there's a huge huge learning curve I don't know everything and the one with the bigger mass um, might probably might, might end up winning right <laughs> yeah probably made a bunch of mistakes in my assumptions in the things that I've said mm-hmm. already mm-hmm. so there's a lot of things that are changing now that, assume that you've convinced us uh-huh. how does someone invest in bitcoin where do I start do I so are they it... at the market is there like some guy distributing them what happens so the first thing um or do you see someone behind the tent like with any investment i think the the fundamentals of all investments come into play so you have to look at several things 
your risk appetite and i think somebody mentioned this in an earlier podcast yeah so this the your risk appetite um how much you're willing to play with and and uh what your goals are okay so i would say what why do you want to invest in bitcoin why not ethereum there is what i don't know 10000 coins listed in, on coin gecko alone so why not why not any one of the 10000 Why that just that particular one we have a thousand over a thousand different bit uh, the bitcoin mm-hmm. cryptocurrencies yeah so i have one of the biggest problems i have with it is mm-hmm. which is the one that you guys want to <laughs> ask to take up because uh say if i'm in on ethereum mm-hmm. and you guys have your bitcoins mm-hmm. is there an exchange rate like <laughs> how how the exchange rate is always fluctuating first mm-hmm. of all mm-hmm. so there is there is an exchange rate yes that's why they, there is exchanges like binance and coinbase um so there is centralized exchanges like those two I just mentioned and there is decentralized exchanges um such as uniswap pancakeswap uh, sushi swap coffee swap <laughs> um the difference between these two is that for centralized exchanges like binance and uh, and coinbase what you have is something called and even i think hot bit if i'm not wrong uh you have your wallet is a custodial wallet meaning it's in the custody of some somebody else of a centralized entity like coinbase and coinbase is is the organization that holds your privacy that that holds your wallet's keys and what you need to do to log in is uh, add some you know use your email address and password and Coinbase also will 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 conduct something called a KYC. Know your, know your customer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they'll they'll need some information about you, mm-hmm. some identification, legal identification about you. Whereas other other exchanges such as uh, the biggest DEX uh, decentralized exchange is one of the biggest ones is called Uniswap. So it runs on on the Ethereum on the Ethereum blockchain. And this one they won't ask you to it's decentralized so it's not controlled by one singular entity meaning that anybody can publish their coin there can list their coin there no with 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 the case of binance for example binance has a has a quality control team that looks into the quality of each coin that before it's listed onto the exchange on uniswap it's anything goes which means that you have to do your own research uh, the other thing about uh, when you when interacting with a uh, dex is that you use a non custodial wallet so what's a non custodial wallet um a non custodial wallet okay so a wallet like like your real life wallet is is where you hold your yeah is where you hold your crypto assets so i'm um, notice I've, i've not said cryptocurrency i've said crypto assets because beside the currencies there are other types of tokens yeah nfts we'll get into those later so uh you you need to have those um your keys uh, sorry you you it's called a recovery phrase or a seed phrase so they, they usually give it to you and you have to print it out or copy it down on a piece of paper and store it in a safe place because if you lose access to your account the, that recovery phrase is what is going to help you if you lose access to that then your funds are lost forever no no the thing about the thing about uh, an uncustodial wallet like like metamask i personally like metamask a lot so with an uncustodial wallet is that you can use it across multiple m- multiple exchanges so with the money in your in your binance in your binance account you can only use it on binance you can only transact your assets on binance but with your metamask you can connect it to opensea you can connect it to uh, sushi swap pancake swap and the like Ah, okay. yeah you can just move from it from exchange to exchange It's like carrying your wallet from different from different market to different ah, market so you can be able to is a way of, of reconciling the different cryptos yeah okay good so um no, different exchanges different exchanges yeah. and in your wallet you can have m- multiple cryptos so in your metamask you can hold some ethereum you can hold some binance mm-hmm. you can hold you can hold a uh, ethereum based they are called erc20 tokens mm. so out of the 10000 is something interesting that i uh, find personally interesting so out of the 10000 tokens that are there on 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 coin gecko about a huge percentage of them don't have their own blockchains mm-hmm. because as i mentioned earlier you know it requires significant upfront 
investment. investment. Yeah, you need to develop the code and then uh, on top of that you have to find a way to entice people to join your network. And are you really going to join 10,000 networks? Mm-hmm. So the guys at the guys at Ethereum, very, very smart. It's led by somebody called Vitalik Buterin, mm-hmm. uh, one, of, one of the pioneers mm-hmm. of technology in our generation. So um, they invented uh, something called ERC-20 tokens. With an ERC-20 token, it allows you to create a token that is housed on the Ethereum. Mm-hmm. Exchange. It's it's already on the on the Ethereum blockchain. Ah, so, so you'd have to create your own. Blockchain. So someone can, if I wanted my own kind of cryptocurrency, I can base it off of the the Ethereum blockchain. Yeah, so, so you can create your own. You can create your own coin mm-hmm. and have it on on Ethereum. Ah, that's running that's cool. running there. Mm. So now a question can be asked. Mm. Now my mom is has understood what wallet is and what blockchain is. Mm-hmm. So where does she start? So. Again, you need to have you need to have that conversation with yourself. What are you trying to achieve? I want to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> Why do I you want to buy Bitcoin? It? Because I want to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I want I want I, I want to be rich. So you want to be I rich? I got a bonus of 500k and now I want to make it into 590k. Mm-hmm. Where do I start? Um what what's your investment horizon? 500k. Uh, what how long do you want to turn it to 590? I do right, at this point I'm on a high. I don't give a. I don't care. Let me not use what I was about to say. I don't care. Uh-huh. I want to uh-huh. have this money. I want to buy mm-hmm. coins. Okay. Where do I begin? Do I, is there an app? Is there like an agency? So um, for most for most beginners, I advise I would advise you to start with uh, start with a centralized exchange because mm-hmm. as I mentioned earlier, they've got their own quality control measures. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, Binance. Binance has a team that. Before any coin is listed on Binance, there are a bunch of things that they have to check off. So when you talk about agency, mm-hmm. if I, agency? I want you to break it down. Like the so exchange, the exchange. Sorry. Uh-huh. Uh, so do I do I Google them and then like they have an office and then there's a girl who's going to call me? <laughs> My point is, how do you do it? So the biggest crypto exchanges are centralized crypto exchanges are Binance and Coinbase. Um, uh, those are certainly the most popular. Binance is the biggest one globally, and they've got they've they've got a very good um, operation running in Africa already. Although recently adding your money to Binance is, is becoming a bit of a headache. They keep changing the system every single day. So um, if you are to go on Binance, let's use Binance Binance as an example. You can you can buy using your credit card, or you can buy using something called P two P. So they've got. Uh, Actually, initially, the people who who used to buy who started buying bitcoins or buying them on a website called localbitcoins.com, and there you you essentially buy them from another person, and they'll send them to your wallet. So a wallet, a wallet is a software that holds your crypto assets. This piece of software can be a mobile app. It can be, it can be a, it can be a, an account. You know website no it's not centralized so, yes mm-hmm. so if you if you have if you have it in a in a centralized exchange an account in a centralized exchange you've got what is known as a non custodial wallet if if you own the if if you run the wallet yourself like trust wallet and you have the you have the keys you have the recovery code that's that's an that, that's a custodial wallet um it it can be an app it can be a, it can be an account in an exchange like Binance. It can also be a, an extension, a browser extension, like on Chrome. MetaMask has a has a Chrome extension, and also it can be a hardware wallet. So hardware wallet is something. It looks like a looks like a USB device, but that's why that's what holds your crypto. So if you hold, if you have a large amount of crypto, like if you bought, well, though you mentioned five hundred thousand shillings out of crypto, I wouldn't recommend just having it in in your browser, in your MetaMask, in your browser. Mm-hmm. Things happen. Things happen. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know somebody who's who got wiped. He made, made a transaction, went to sleep, uh, left left the the stuff on his computer. Woke up the next morning, it was gone. And that is where we have a problem with crypto. <laughs> brought to you by the Kenyan government. You know. <laughs> so, so I'm asking mm-hmm. when when when. I feel like you're not simplifying it mm-hmm. so okay. enough because I have my 500k. I want to buy crypto. Mm-hmm. 
you've mentioned a number of things. Okay. So mm. step by step process. Number one, go to binance.com. Mm-hmm. Create click on uh click uh, create an account. Mm-hmm. Or sign up. Mm-hmm. You'll create an account, it will take some of your details. You need to do you need to do a KYC process, mm-hmm. know your customer. That means you'll need to take a photograph, mm-hmm. need to take some pictures of your ID. Mm-hmm. They'll need to do like a scan of your face mm-hmm. using your webcam or something. Yeah. And then from that point you will need to fund your account. Mm-hmm. So finding your account you can either use your credit card or you can use P2P. With P2P or even debit card is fine. Right? Yeah, or a debit card, yeah. Mm-hmm. So with with P2P, uh, Binance has has a section on their website where you can buy from other people. Instead of you not know, buying from the mass market, people can list their prices say I, I want to I'm selling I'm selling Bitcoin at 64,000. See the market price is 66,000 at the moment. I'm selling Bitcoin at 64,000. You can buy Bitcoin worth between 10,000 shillings and 40,000 shillings at a go. And then, you know, you, you click on that person and you 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 can you should also view the trust rating of course, don't just buy from anyone because there are crooks there. Uh, a lot of people from West Africa won't mention the countries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they're not all of them actually bad because mm-hmm. uh, most guys are actually just trying to find a way to to make it big. Yeah. So yeah. So from there you buy your you buy the coin that you want. So you can check they, they have the the different currencies. The most popular ones are the biggest ones. So you can buy USDT. You can buy. If I'm not wrong, you can buy Bitcoin, you can buy Ethereum, you can buy Binance Coin, BNB, you can buy Cardano, ADA, and uh, yeah, several. Which one is the best? Best for and what? And it's a stupid question. Yeah, best for but, what? But in terms of like the 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 the, the how much it's appreciated over over the years. I can give you I can give you some crazy examples. Even just opening Bitcoin, at the, if you open Coin Gecko at the moment, I can show you a coin. Um, What's it called the drift token that that that's up something like 53000 percent in the last two months alone um uh, dogecoin mm-hmm. if you check how much dogecoin has grown i bet you guys if you go billy can go to coingecko.com you can be able to see mm-hmm. how much these people are how, how much the coin has appreciated mm-hmm. in in a period in, in a set period mm-hmm. so you've got coins that are being launched today mm-hmm. and within a month They're up ten thousand percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing that you need to do don't don't just rely on the news or your friends. First thing you should do as a crypto investor, critical, is do your own research. Okay. Don't take anybody's advice blindly. Mm-hmm. Just <laughs> do your own research. If something something if you hear something from somebody, don't just buy because of their conviction. Mm-hmm. Go and do your research. Does this make sense to you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, here's another practical tip. So when I got started, um there's a huge risk of using all your money. Mm-hmm. Of of losing all your money, especially and it's it's a new system, it's not what you're used to. You might don't really understand what what's happening. There's so many ways of of, of playing around with your money in the crypto space. So first of all, don't invest any more than you're willing to lose. I think that's a rule from gambling the gambling world don't play with any amount of money that you're not willing to lose secondly don't bet all your money at once okay test 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 what what i did so when i started i used to i used to inv- uh, i used to make purchases in in batches of $100 so the way i do it is um, see i buy $100 worth of worth of BNB that's Binance coin so I'll divide it into 35 lots 20 lots of $2 each and for and and 15 lots of $40 each first one adds to $40 the second one adds up to 60 so if I'm really confident about a coin I'd I'd spend one lot of the bigger of the 15 so I'd spend $4 on it and forget about it if if there's a coin that I like but I think is high risk. I'd place two dollars on it, so the, the, it kind of hedges itself yeah, out. Yeah. At least from in the early stages when you're learning, mm. you want to you want to, de- to design. You're definitely going to lose some money, mm. and don't don't think of don't think of you losing that money as a sunk cost. Mm. Think of it as the cost of learning. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. 
That's very interesting. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I think mm-hmm. I've learned a lot about mm-hmm. Bitcoin and uh, and cryptocurrency. I don't know. You keep saying Bitcoin <laughs> to refer to cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I mm-hmm. think uh, yeah, the information sure. has been very valuable to the people. Mm-hmm. Hope we will be able to continue having more discussions like this. Awesome. Uh, so where can we find your details? Yeah. So you can find me on LinkedIn. Felix Karanja you can also check me out uh, my website is uh, write me an email as well it's felix at kuni.co.ke that's felix at k-o-o-n-i dot co.ke that's my business website like I said I, I run <laughs> I run a marketing agency that's my day to day job yeah those are my two major social uh, um, ways, ways of linking with me Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. This was actually quite refreshing. Yes, I mm-hmm. always enjoy having people know their mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. on the podcast. Asante sana. Anyway, so uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we hope you had a good time as I did. Uh, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>